What's good, boys and girls? Today, we're doing a results video for Bellator Belfast that just wrapped up. A very, very good event for Bellator, in my opinion. I watched it basically start to finish. There were a lot of great fights, a lot of great competitors. It was the first event, I believe, in the PFL's Bellator Championship Series. It comes perfectly after their PFL versus Bellator. Bellator kind of proved in those moments that because the organization existed a little bit longer, they did have more talent. And again, these Bellator cards are very, very good. I did honestly enjoy the PFL broadcasting or augmentations to the normal Bellator broadcast that we're used to seeing. And I thought it made it a little more intriguing, a little more interesting. I do enjoy it. And I think Bellator and PFL have a not even a long way to go in making sure they have the best product available. And then they just have to build through the roster, build some stars and stuff like that. So I do actually think the acquisition for Bellator outside of the financial side, which I'm not really privy to. I think that from a media side, from a consumer perspective, it's honestly going to be very, very good, but we'll get straight into the results video. We'll head top to bottom. So you can also skip, I'll do it content outline wise. So you can see and skip the fights that you might want to see, but we'll start in the main event. Corey Anderson defeats Carl Moore. He becomes the vacant light heavyweight champion. This was a impressive performance. A lot of people probably didn't enjoy it from an entertainment perspective, but again, Corey Anderson implemented a game plan that has worked for for him in so many of his fights and all of his wins where he takes his opponent down if the opponent does get up he has gassed out their arms and legs to where Corey anderson even if he is a little bit of a worse striker he has his moments because his opponent is almost exhausted from the constant ground control from anderson this was an impressive performance anderson improves to 18 and 6 carl moore falls to 12 and 3 but more a lot of potential in my opinion his stand-up was good and his grappling Besides the fact he wasn't offensive with it whatsoever, his defense was very, very good. He might have been put down. He might have taken strikes from a guy like Corey Anderson, and he was taken down a ton. So take that with a grain of salt. But once he was put on his back, he was able to get back to his feet. So if he can build a cardio base and maybe a little bit more of the wrestling defense to not let him get put in those positions, his jujitsu is there. His striking is there. A lot of potential there. I enjoyed watching Carl Moore perform, and I think that he has big things ahead. Then the constant in all of Bellator, Patricio Pitbull getting another win, improving to 36 and seven, another featherweight win. Jeremy Kennedy looked good going into the third round where Patricio ended up finding a finish with a huge right hand and follow up strikes. When Patricio gets you in a position of weakness, he is one of the best at following up on finishes. And he showed it again here. Pitbull finishing Jeremy Kennedy in the third round with knees and elbows, forcing Kennedy. It was a beautiful one-two combination, having Kennedy up against the fence, and you felt Pitbull after the second round, which probably went to Kennedy, that Pitbull knew he was going to have to put a sense of urgency into the next round, and he did, and he landed the shot to put him away. Great win here from another featherweight, one of the greater featherweights of all time, one of the more impressive fighters outside of the UFC all time, and he calls out Aaron Pico, to which, if promoted correctly, can be one of Bellator's biggest fights and a clear main event in the featherweight division. The way that they built Pico as this dominant guy who has lost in his career but has such an impressive skill set and the ability to finish fights and is so youthful against one of the greatest fighters to ever compete outside of the UFC octagon and one of the greatest fighters maybe the greatest fighter in Bellator history then in the third fight we got the title eliminator Fabian Edwards defeats Aaron Jeffrey in which was a much like fight to the Dolgarian versus C-Rod fight I thought Dolgarian won that fight whereas I thought the actual Fabian Edwards won in this one because I felt like Aaron Jeffrey although he was pushing the pace and holding him in the clinch he didn't do anything at all he didn't land a takedown Fabian outlanded him in takedowns four to one Aaron Jeffrey just didn't look like he had enough explosiveness or enough of a game plan here that matched Fabian Edwards skill set so he wasn't able to have any real explosive or dominant moments in the fight whereas Fabian Edwards whenever it was at range was snapping Jeffrey's head back and it was just a performance that here Fabian Edwards striking even though he was less in the number side was more significant in my opinion so I thought the judges got it right in this one 29 28 first round clearly each way the second round was the decider and again if Jeffrey put in maybe one or two explosive takedowns he could have got the nod but because he didn't and it was just it was literally just holding him up against the fence it cost him a victory in my opinion then James Gallagher who I was going to tweet out if he won this fight he has to get in the title picture because they have such a superstar here but he suffers another tough defeat to Leandro Higo who has been calling for this fight for a while the Brazilian was more impressive in every situation, the grappling and the striking, in my opinion. Even though Gallagher was moving forward, he was getting countered. He didn't look like he had many opportunities to land what he wanted to land. 
This was an impressive performance from the Brazilian. And then Manuel Sosa, who might be one of the more explosive and impressive prospects in the, in the Bellator lightweight division, was able to finish Tim Wilde in the first round via strikes. Although he was struggling to find the chin of Tim early, it's just one shot because Sosa is such an explosive striker. This was a great underdog win, and Bellator has a prospect that, if marketed right as a Brazilian, could have potential to be a great champion or a great contender. Then also, the Irish boys get get their win on the prelim main event. Kieran Clark looked so impressive in this fight, getting the submission in the third round at bantamweight. I think that he has potential, especially with Bellator having a big focus on the Irish fan base. They've come to Ireland many times, and I see more in their future with Liam McCourt being a heavy prospect on their radar to become a potential superstar for them. So if they continue their Irish ways, I can see Clark co-main eventing in a title situation. For now, only at 9-0, and I think Bellator is going to keep him away from the title picture, but still, it was an impressive performance. Otherwise, on the card, I like the Alfie Davis, Oscar Owensworth fight. That was great. Luke Trainer defeats Grant Neal, improves to 8-1. Nathan Kelly lands an amazing knockout. This was a great knockout. Nelbo, I posted a short for it. It was a great win. Another Irish boy getting a victory. Nate Kelly, another Irish fighter, getting a win to open the card. And finally, Abraham Bath improves his undefeated record against another undefeated fighter in Isaiah Pinson. So this was a great event for Bellator. Belafast, their champion series. It was a great event. I thought that top to bottom the card was very very good negatives for me i don't like the friday afternoon idea here obviously i know what they're trying to do they're trying to get to the british audiences the uk time zone audiences which it makes sense because it would be later for them but again the friday time point for me i didn't like i would prefer them to do it a saturday afternoon if they're gonna try and hit both lanes and if you look at the anthony joshua fight which tried to do the same thing with the friday afternoon card it sold like shit I don't think it's a smart decision for this time slot to be filled with combat. Personally, just my opinion. If you missed out on this event on the American-Canadian side, it fully makes sense to me, but you probably would be able to catch the highlights. And the other thing that's a big negative for me is the promotional aspect of these events. The UFC, you see it on sports channels everywhere. They are getting promoted. I feel like Bellator and PFL, PFL a little less, but Bellator, going through the developmental stages of becoming a part of the PFL, they have a tough time promoting where they're showcasing to anybody other than the UK audience and the American audience. As a Canadian, it was on Fight Network, which is generally harder to come by as a sports fan in Canada. And it wasn't really announced until like three or four days before the event. So you'd have to, if you didn't already have Fight Network as a part of your cable subscription, it was tougher for you to locate. So those are some negatives for me. I think that they could do it with a boost for their promotional aspects and stuff on that nature. And once they do, I think that they could get a more mainstream media contract that has all the bases covered, all the countries covered, and more or less that kind of stuff. But it was a great event. We saw two champions, one new, one retained. And I'm excited to see where Bellator goes with this championship series as a part of the PFL banner. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, remember, smash that like button, subscribe to Combat Sports Central, and I will see you in the next one.